No. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Laughing with Lana, the podcast with absolutely no substance because we talk about everything and absolutely nothing all at the exact same time. I got my really good friend here with me, Miss Bree Bree Hunter. Back on the show. <laughs> Down for another fucking episode. This is a part two. Yeah, this is this part, is part two. two. And I got I got behind the ones and twos. Skirry skirry over there, Miss Carolina. <laughs> I love the name. Not Carolina. the solo woo in the back. <laughs> woo! <laughs> you sound like the Karen. <laughs> it's actually perfect too. I just realized because you know how I always refer to you as like the Cardi B of comedy. Yeah. And her sister's name is Carolina, right? No. Uh. Yeah. Oh my God. So it's perfect. Oh, so you my bitch. Ah, oh, let's go. Carolina. 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 You know, it's everything funny. Everything sounds better in like a Hispanic accent. So, so I, I don't feel comfortable not saying it, it without the Spanish accent because when she there, like when they first, when she first got like the, the, the position as an intern, they had said, they were like, yeah, we have a girl named Carolina. And I was like, I was like, is she Latina? And they're like, yeah, she's Latina. And I was like, then her name is Carolina. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> I was like, does she say that or do you guys say that? And they were like, no, she said that. And I was like, no, that's not true. That was like, her name is Carolina. And then when I when I met her, she introduced herself as Carolina. Like, no, she was like, it's Carolina, but you know, Carolina. And I'm like, no, but what are you? Like, what is your ethnicity? I, I'm Mexican. Oh, yeah. I love Mexicans. I actually was just thinking about this today. I love Mexicans. Hell yeah. They're like some of my favorite. I feel like I'm, in my soul, I'm a Mexican, to be honest with you. <laughs> Like everything about me, like the more I'm like, I'm like, these are my people. Like I feel right at home with Mexicans. We more would, than any other culture, I feel right at home. We would take with them. you in a heartbeat, bitch. Oh, I love it. You kind of, you could pass for like, not really Mexican. You could kind of pass for Mexican. You got the dark hair, like, like half. Skin. Like oh, half. Like I yeah. feel the half Mexican. Like yeah. I, you look like half Mexican, like half Jew. Yes. 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 Oh my God. No, yeah. for sure. Actually, what a great mix, too. That's like, what a. <laughs> eclectic mix i would love to be that i'm neither i'm not mexican or jewish but what i would love to be both i'm a um, mutt yeah, i'm a huge mutt though oh, i love this this yeah. mutt made such a cute little mutt oh you you she yeah. she's like from every part of every world like every just into yeah. one no they were like they were sluts have we had this conversation before? yes we did the first time. yeah they, i think we did yeah they i'm telling you it's it's the truth they just slept their way from like kind of like the middle east all the way to america they just <laughs> You know, like wait, tell, tell Carolina the story. She doesn't know. Oh, so yeah, so basically, I had like when I growing up, they would say that we were from all these different countries, and I'm like, there's no way. Like, definitely, like you know, because also like my nana's known to kind of like just get confused about shit. So I'm like, there's, <laughs> I'm like, there's no way we're from all these different places. So then I finally get my DNA tested, and believe it or not, we are from all these places. Then and then some. Like there were places that I, we didn't even like know we were from. So I kind of looked at it and I'm like, it looks like my family, we started out in the Middle East and then we just literally just slept our way <laughs> through Europe and like certain parts of like Norway. And I'm like, and then we just ended up in, you know, here. So <laughs> you know what, that's, that's cool. Cause you got a little bit of everything. Yes, quite literally. We we tried the, the local fare everywhere we went. Your we were family like, is try. like my sexuality basically yes which is why we're probably we love each other so much it's like yeah I'm like like me and your family like we're all like slutty yeah I love it <laughs> I love it but in, in like a great way but no I love Mexicans especially like even being friends with you like it's Aww, like I hate nothing. Mexicans fuck all y'all no I'm playing I like Mexicans wait are empanadas is that a Mexican thing or a Puerto Rican thing it's both it okay. depends on who made it but yes it's a little bit of both they have Mexican empanadas that taste completely different oh. from a Puerto Rican empanada, but oh baby, listen, listen, oh girl, they there's a Mexican tamale, yes, and then there's a Puerto Rican. I call it a tamale, but it's called a pastele. It's basically a fucking tamale. Pastele. Oh good. yeah, pastele. I know. I just like that you. I can show up at your house and you will give me like an emotional support empanada <laughs> if I need one. Like if I'm having a bad day, she's like, "Do you want me to make empanadas?" And I'm like, "Yes, I actually would like that." You know? That's so embarrassing, but that's so funny. She came to my house twice, and I was like, "I'm making it," but oh no, I didn't even. They were my friends were hungry. She was hungry, and my friend Franco was hungry, and so she was like, "I was like, do you guys want me to like make you some empanadas?" And she goes, "Like, no, bitch, that's a lot to like do." I literally whipped it up in like 15 minutes. I just made like the ground beef, and then I grabbed the empanada and I just smashed them together and fried them. And she was like, you really just whipped this up? And I was like, yeah. She's like, you're not going to eat any? And oh, I was like, mesmerized, yeah. I was like, <laughs> mesmerized. And then the sofritas, like learning what that was, I was like, I looked for that in Whole Foods. They do so, not sell it. Never Whole Foods. 
little too white, I guess. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm like, son of a bitch. They, they don't do have any Sofritas here. Sofritas. <laughs> Fuck this. I was like, I was like, they have like a knockoff Italian version that I tried. I'm like, it's not the same. It's not the same. Sofritas. I'm like, I don't want this. I was so mad. I was so mad. For, for those of you that are confused. Wait, how do you say it? Sofrito. 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 I actually, my, I used to get complimented. <laughs> Granted, these were all like the gringos where I grew up, but the, everyone used to be like, when I would speak Spanish in Spanish class, people would be like, oh, you actually do the accent? And I'm like, yeah, otherwise you, you seem like a fucking to. idiot if you don't. A little bit. Not, not like, like sometimes, like, don't get me wrong, I get it when people are like cilantro. <sighs> Or like when they're like, let me get a burrito or some. I hate that. Like that's how I feel about like Italian things. When people are like mozzarella, I'm like it's mozzarella. Like what are you? Ooh. Yeah, or what? Or like they calamari, it's calamad. Like, oh. you know. I just got hard. <laughs> oh my god, my dick is hard. Hold on. <laughs> See, isn't it hot when you hear somebody like speak their own? Yes, you know? though. Yeah, because I'm like mozzarella. Where's the where's the a? Where's the a? Where's the a? Hey, you forgot the A. <laughs> oh, my God. But that's so facts, though, because sometimes, like, I wouldn't say it offends me. It doesn't offend me, but it kind of rubs me the wrong way when people when people are like, yeah, we're going to go get some tacos. Can you please put some cilantro? Like, can you hold the Savoya? And I'm like, I'm like, bro, it's like, first off, you're going to say Savoya. It, it was someone said that it, it was a thing like someone someone that I knew we went to Chipotle, I think it was. And they asked for Savoya. And I was like, if you're going to say it like that, just fucking say onion, bitch. Like, why would you why would you in front of me, too, that you feel real comfortable? Like at this point, just yeah, let it like, go. Let at it least go. like at least like you, like if you like are trying to speak in Spanish, you'll be like, because she even said Sofritas. Sofritas. Like, I'm like, all right, she tried. I'm not mad at her, but I was like, it's Sofrito. sofrito. Yeah. It? See? I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah. That shit's bomb. If, you, if people don't know what sofrito is, try to, You got to make it at home. It's a lot better to make it at home, but personally, I just don't know how to make it at home. My mom makes it for me. But when I'm running low, I use the store-bought one. Kind of, it's all right. It's the same, but, bro. Oh, sofrito. Sofrito makes everything taste Puerto Rican. This, Everything. This is why I always take a stand. Like I'm pro immigration. I'm like open. Why not? Open why? the floodgates at the no. southern border. Like we're keeping out the wrong population. Like I, if anything, like close off Canada. Like I don't want any French I'm Quebec done. people. Like I'm sorry. I'm sorry, French. Like people from Quebec. What the fuck are you bringing to the table? Absolutely nothing. Arrogance. That's pretty much it. You know what I mean? Like, Mexican people, they can fix shit. They have the good cocaine, tequila, the food. I mean, they work harder than anybody I know. They're fucking fun. Like, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it's this a ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm like, out of all the people, I'm like, there should we shouldn't even be checking people down there. I'm like, this should just be like open, open. You know. Like, I can think of 20 groups of people. I won't name them other than the French, but I can think of 20 groups of people that I would rather keep out before. Oh, I, would I know say, you know who I would kick out. Don't. But yeah, um, I, <laughs> I know. I know your preferences. But I am secretly racist. I don't. I don't. I don't like promote it to the world because I'm not like. I don't want them to die. I might mind you, like it's just there's just there's a certain group of people that trigger me. I'll say that. Well, let's. I feel like though. It, Here's the thing, though. In your case, you had a very tough experience with a particular group of people. Very. And I think that that can happen to a lot of people. And then it does lead you to become a little bit prejudiced. You know what I mean? Because you've had a bad experience with those people. Totally. Um, and I think that changes you, you know? like Because, well, like, low-key, I'm one of those people that, like, like say, for example, like... Like, if a white girl cut me off in the middle of the road and then started yelling at me or something, and it was, like, some road rage shit, but it was a white girl, for the rest of the day, I don't like white girls. Right. Yeah, like, I'm just, like, temporary I'm, racism. Yeah, temporary like, racism. I'm, I'm a very temp racist. Very yeah. temp. Yeah, like, God, for, God forbid, like, a fucking black guy does something, like, crazy stupid to me, then I'm like, oh, fuck all black guys today. Like, yeah. no. Just for just for twenty four hours, but like no, like I just have like this certain hate for the day, like like I have a thing against you guys just for today. Just for today, yeah. And then you get I over do. it. That's better than holding a grudge for like you know eons and eons. You know what I mean? Yeah, like there I know. are certain cultures who are hanging on to that. So at least with you, it's like twenty four hours, and you're like over it. So that's pretty. Yeah, cool. no, not with racism. 
with racism. I don't I I don't genuinely think I'm racist. But there is that certain group of people that I'm just like, I just I just want to steer clear. People would never know who it is. But I just kind of want to like steer clear of that group of people. And no, it's not white people because I work for white people and no it's not black people because I fucked the shit out of black guys. Ah, it's not them. But either way, I think I think the certain group of people it's like I don't want them to die. I don't necessarily want them to go back to their country. But like I would genuinely like tape all of their mouths. Well, you I feel like the only thing that really cancels out that kind of experience is if you then have a good experience with that group of people. I haven't yet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I feel like you have not you've yet to meet like a, like a good yeah but that's that's what it's gonna take i think I to change the one you know what's funny is the one person that i had a good experience with and it was like like she, i told you you remind me of her like i had like oh no no like she had your vibe like i had a good experience with her she was so much fun loved her and then i gave her my cat i gave her my cat mind you she told me she moved to vegas from new york she moved to Vegas, and then she told me that she didn't want to be alone, and she met my cats, and she was like, "I." She was like, "Oh my god, this little gray one." I named her Stormy. On top of it, she was a gray, oh, like Stormy Daniels, fluffy cat. No, I just said because she looks like a gray cloud, like a storm. Oh. So I named her Stormy, and I thought it was super cute. So, I I was I was gonna keep this cat. I would have had four cats. Mm -hmm. I was going to keep this cat. She tells me she's moving to Vegas. Me and her are super close. And she's like, I want a cat. I feel like I should, like, would you give me that cat? Liter I swear on God, on the Lord Jesus above, I told her, if you cannot take care of this cat, give it back to me. If you go out of town, give me the cat. I will take don't, care. Don't like, kennel it or whatever? Yeah, don't put her in a kennel. Don't don't put her in a little foster. Don't give it to the neighbor. Like, I will take the cat. I want her to know me still, because mm -hmm. that's still my cat. I just gave it to my friend because I thought she was going to keep the cat forever. So I was like, me and you are going to be friends forever. I'm going to be able to see the cat. I loved it. This bitch gave my cat to the neighbor because she said that. So she didn't have She enough. gave your pussy away. Basically, she disrespected your pussy, and that's not okay. You can't do that. <laughs> Cannot do that. Can do it with a bird. You can do it with a bird. <laughs> can't do it with a cat, though. That's wrong. I've, but continue. I've met I've met men's with little birds, them now, little finches. <laughs> oh, like micro? Micro. Well, I'm sorry, I derailed you. We can get. Back I know, into that right? Later, we'll get back yeah. into that. But this bitch. She gave away, my, well, okay, so she told me that she didn't have enough time to bring, because mind you, she lives in Henderson, I live in Vegas, like, the, the central, and she was like, I didn't have enough time to bring you the cat with all of the stuff before I got on my flight to New York. She was like, so I gave it to my neighbor to watch her, and I was like, okay, that's fine, but next time, just let me know, I will go and pick her up. Then all of a sudden, she gets back from New York, the cat is not on Instagram no more. The cat is not on Facebook no more. The cat's not, she's not on no social media no more. So I was like, yo, bro, like, where's Stormy? Like, where's where's the cat? And literally explains it to me and says, listen, I just didn't feel like I had enough time to take care of my cat, or the cat. She was like, so I gave it to the neighbor, and when the neighbor took care of it, the neighbor has two daughters, and I feel bad taking the cat away from two kids. I don't give a fuck about these kids. Yeah. I don't know these kids. I don't I have zero emotional connection to these fucking brats that you gave my pussy to. Yeah. Like why would why would you give my cat away? I was like I lit and I swear on everything. I literally told her, "It is still my cat, but if you just don't want to be alone because you're alone in your apartment, then I will give you this cat." Right. But if you don't want her, you can't handle her. I literally told her, "If you cannot handle her, or if you can't take care of her, or if you're going out of town, give me back the cat. She didn't. That's ballsy. Stop talking to her. Yeah. But she was of that culture. She was of one of those people. And I'm like, the one good experience that I had, I was like, you gave away my fucking cat. I don't like y'all. Yeah, you've had a bad run. Yeah. So I can't really blame you for having Maybe it's like the some... Vegas ones. Perhaps. Perhaps. I don't Perhaps. know. Because I really like the old ladies. Yeah. Oh, my God. The old ladies, they be... Oh my God, I got a soft spot for them because they mean as fuck, but they're like cute. Oh, I have a thing for mean old people. 
Do you? I love mean old people. I always crack them first off, but I love mean old people. Except Marvin. Oh, no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. I like old people. Um, yeah. I love old people. I mean, I always date. Do you? Have you dated like older men consistently? You're all. I feel like you. You kind of like tasted the rainbow a little bit in your in your time, which is a good thing. Um, I feel like I. <laughs> you know, like that's no, it's a good thing. Um, but I've dated. I just had this conversation with somebody the other day. I'm like, mm -hmm. I've almost always consistently dated guys who are older. Really? What What is the thing with them? I think um, it's I not like daddy are, issues. No, it's not. Um, I think that I mean honestly, like sometimes it's just like it comes down to we have the same taste in music. Like I like weird Aww. old people music, and they, you know what I mean. Like it's like we have the same interests, but also I like them. It's like the Amy Schumer joke. I like them when they're like a little tired, you know, like they're just <laughs> when they're a little worn down. It's like it's like adopting an old pet. Like yeah, like a kitten is like cute and fun. And it's exciting, oh. but they're a lot of work. You know, yes. you get an old one, they just want to like cuddle, they you give them a little bit of affection, I you know? I fucking hate that she compared it to a dog and a cat. I, oh yeah, I feel like we're on like a theme here. But I feel we like, are! You know, they're like loyal, They're because also like they're too fucking tired to cheat, unless you get one of these like, these guys around here. The guys in the studio, like they're all pumping testosterone, like it's going out of style. Oh my God! That's a little bit of a problem. I need one who's like a little bit like, you know, like they've Yo, not been key. taking their vitamins. I don't think I don't think we could talk about this, but we're gonna talk about it because it's my pod my podcast. Oh boy. But a lot of the people that walk in here, I know they hit on you too. They hit on you too. A lot of the people that walk in this bitch are married. Married. Oh yeah. Coming in to go do a show, to go be they're a podcast host. They're fuck something. But I'm like, motherfucker, you brought your wife in here. They don't care. I saw something on Instagram recently. It was like a lot of single men are afraid to shoot their shot, but married guys will unload the clip. Wow. And, yeah. And it's true. Wait, wait, wait. Poetry. I song. wish I had the confidence in terms of flirting that like men who are taken do. And it's always like the lines are always the same, right? It's like you're trouble. It's like, no, bitch, you're trouble. You are trouble. That's right. How many? How or if well, okay, I were single, okay, wait, wait, wait. if first I were all, single, first of well, all, you're not, so. First of all, let's be, okay, the your trouble. Tell me that's not something 45 and older. Always, yeah. Oh, boom! You're a trouble, like 45 you and up. They got like a pants you age it. yourself when you say that you're trouble, 45 and up. Done. Done. I already know your age. I already know. Oh, you know You know what else? Uh, 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 there's, oh, there's another one. I had it on the tip of my tongue right now. I'm gonna think about it. But there's the the your trouble, you can tell that people are old. Dur, excuse me. You're not old. Your older. trouble. I'm trying to think of like what else. Um or if I were single, if this were ten years ago, also old, also old. Oh yeah, I get that. If I was ten, yeah. Yeah. Or if I Ooh. met you beforehand, it's like, okay, but you didn't, you know? Like it's shoulda, coulda, woulda, pal. Like it's it's over. You know what? There's actually there's a UFC fighter. Oh my god. I'm doing it. I don't give a fuck. There's a UFC fighter who has a girlfriend, and I'm like, bro, do you understand? Like, like we met and we hit it off. Like me and him met, we hit it. Off. I didn't know he had a girlfriend at the time, but he he. Luckily, he was honest with me, and he was like, listen, like, like I like you. You know, we talk here and there, but like I have a girlfriend, and I'm like, I and I'm like, but me personally, I was like, the simple fact that you have a girlfriend, I'm not doing it. I'm, I, have a, I am a changed woman. I do not care what people say nowadays. Yes, I used to be a side chick. Am I now one? No, and I am not one today. So the fact that he keeps <laughs> Carolina went like this. Reform, we love a reformer. You know? I'm a 100%. I'm, a I'm like I'm like Vanessa Dominopolis, whatever her name is. What's her name? Dominopolis? Dominopolis. She's obviously not relevant, that's why. Demo so oh. this bitch, literally, she comes in here, right? And I'm a reformed stripper, I guess you can say. Like, I am an ex-stripper. Do I look down on strippers? No. Absolutely fucking not. And I'm, I'm putting it on blast right now. That girl talked to me because I told her I was a stripper, but I, I asked her if she would be on my podcast so she can share her stripper story. Because I'm like... You're a stripper, but now you're a UFC fucking fighter. Like, that's dope as fuck. Let's talk about the successes. I'm like, my my podcast talks a whole lot more than just fucking dick and pussy. It gets mentioned, but I'm also smart. 
she looked at me and kind of like just did one of those like, oh, there's no way I'm going to do your podcast. Like I have an image to uphold. I cannot. And I, I didn't get offended. I honestly didn't get offended because I'm like, all right, you do have a you do have an image to uphold. I get it. So, you know, my, my, my podcast is a little raunchy, so I get it. When she did it to you, I kind of, not. that's when I took it personal. And not even, like, you're my, Brie is my bitch, all right? Brie is my fucking queen. But, like, it's one thing to, like, kind of offend you, but it was when she offended you that I was like, I was like, wait, so then she meant that about me too. Like, it's not that my podcast is raunchy. It's just that you just don't want to, you just don't want to be associated you with like- You don't want to associate, yeah. You don't want to associate with strippers and OnlyFans models, even though you were one. Right. I didn't like that about her. No, and I think, like, here's the thing. If, um, if somebody is trying to revamp their image or change their image, like, I get that. And, I, and I'm not going to, like, I support that. Don't knock that. it, yeah. Well, exactly. I feel like there's a, a way to go about that, though, that's kind and courteous, and it doesn't make you feel like you're, like, looking down on somebody. Um, thousand percent. Yeah, and I it didn't, it was not that way. It was yeah. not well-received, no. She made, well, because the funny thing is, I'm like, I try my best not to get offended. Like, there's there's been people where I, I meet them here, in the studio, and then they, they're like, I love your vibe, you're a beautiful person, and all this bullshit. Hang on, where's the remote? Because she gonna fuck, she gonna put on Netflix. With <laughs> press the, look, hey, oh, God, we're, back. <laughs> we're back. We're <laughs> back. The Sean Kelly episode, this went black. And then she was trying to fix the screen, and she ended up pressing the Netflix button. Sean, all of a sudden, no, you do, 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 yeah. <laughs> That shit was hilarious. I was like, just leave I'm it off. Dead. Just leave it off. It's my <laughs> I can't. But no, yeah, going back to what I was saying is like, like once uh um when she 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 just no no hold on. Going back to what you said is when I had reached out to some people who had met me here and they're like, uh, your vibe is so cool. I love your energy. I would love to be on your show. And then they see my content. Yeah. And then they're like, e like now they leave me on red. I do not get offended. Right. To be genuinely honest, I'm like, if I ask you to be on my podcast, you leave me on red, I get that your answer was no. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hate you for it. Like, I know that there's images that need to be upheld, but I'm like, does it make me look at you a little different? Yeah, because now you're just, you can't even say no to me. And like, no, you, like, do, do people understand that saying no to someone is not offensive? Right. Leaving somebody on red or it's making weak. them feel less than is is offensive, you know? Like, yeah. I just, I was brought up to kind of treat everybody with the same level of respect. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what you do for a living, how much money you have, how much clout you have, whatever. Like, I treat everybody baseline. Like, you just are, I get, give you yeah. respect. I give you respect until you give me a reason not to give you respect. Um, yeah. And I just think when you're coming up in anything, um, it, being humble also goes a long way. Cause I met like uh, GSP and he's like a huge fighter, like one of the greatest of all time. Could nice. not possibly be a nicer guy. And this is somebody who is at the top, right? So if he can be kind and treat everybody with respect, then people on the come up absolutely should be following suit. You know, yeah. Um, not yeah, not a good thing to be to think too much of yourself. I would say. Yeah, and that's it. Because, oh my God, I was actually getting into like a comment war with this one. It wasn't even a war. It wasn't a war. I hope I could shout you out because I don't even remember what the girl's name was. But um, I had made a comment on Instagram where I was like, I was like, um, some people's, like, some people's shine does need to be dimmed. Yeah. And some she. People need to be humbled. Yeah, like people deserve to be humbled. I am the perfect person to humble anybody. I, every. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care how pretty you are. Every single person can be humbled. Every single one. Because you may be pretty, but bitch, you're probably not happy. Like, you know, right. stupid, super shit. Stupid shit. But um, where was I going with this? I forgot. Well, think on it for a second. Mm -hmm. But I was just going to say, too, I think that, um, like, no matter who you are, I think it's, I mean, obviously being humble is a good trait. But especially if you're somebody who like relies on any type of fans right like what we do like Facts. i rely on people liking me enough to buy into my shit so like of course i'm grateful like i'm not going to treat the people who support me and give me a career like they're less than Never. like you would think that would be a a Standard. basic yeah like you'd be yeah. like that would be like a no-brainer for some people no i feel like people 
people have become so like fascinated by other people that it has made people really think that they're above people. Like, you know what's funny? You know what Chance told me this morning? And it was, I forgot, I forgot the situation that happened. And I'm like, bro, like, like it, this is a whole, like, yes, you're famous, but you're a fucking human being. Right. Chance goes, isn't it crazy how people can still be impressed by people? Yeah. I it's was another like, person, yeah. That's what I said, cause I'm like, like you know, you know my story. There, there, there was someone who was of high value, high profile, who was in my DMs. Mm -hmm. This dude kept asking me to spend the night at his house. Come spend the night. Come spend the night. Hit me up at eleven thirty at night. Hit me up at two thirty in the fucking morning. Hey, can you come over? What the fuck? What hours are those? Booty cheek hours, bro. <sighs> the last thing I'm gonna do is go to your house to give you some fucking non-existent ass of mine. I can't do that. So what I did is I kept telling him, I'm like, I'm sorry, bro, but like, you need to hit me up at a decent time. Hell yeah. This dude really like kind of manipulated the situation and kind of told me like, me and you didn't work out. This is your fault. We didn't meet because of you because you don't want to drop what you're doing basically. This is basically what he said. You don't want to drop what you're doing to come and suck my dick. That is not like a woman. This is, but this is someone, I'm talking, this dude's like, he's almost a billionaire, isn't he? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's on billionaire status. Everyone knows who this dude is. If I said his name, everyone would know who he is. Am I going to drop what the fuck? Am I going to drop my sleep? I barely get that. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm going to drop my sleep for you, bitch? I heard you got ugly feet. Oh, oh no. It's, yeah, we're You're going there. You're human. I'm gonna let it say, I, I know. I feel like I'm talking a lot of shit in this one. But, like, I'm like, we are human. Right. Why is it that a number, a number that represents money, it's a number. Because I'm like, in, in all actual, like, you don't have cash. It's a fucking number on a digital app now at these days. You have money. What the fuck makes you more important than me? Right. Well, actually, I think it was uh, you wouldn't Matt Sarah. Speaking of UFC, but Matt Sarah, who's like a, a famous coach in UFC, um, I remember he said on his podcast one time, and I completely resonated. He was like, "I don't care how famous you are, how talented you are, if you are not a good person, like that's it for me." And I always feel the same way. Like I don't care what uh, other things you're bringing to the table. You could be the most talented person in the world if you're not a good person. That's yeah. the end. You and know. I I a hundred percent am going to live by that motto. What's his name? Matt Sarah. Matt Sarah. Thank you, bro. Cause I'm t I'm a hundred. I know I'm gonna make it. Yeah. I a hundred percent know I'm gonna make it. So like I have to live by that motto because I'm like, if I'm a nobody now ish, like if I'm a nobody now and I'm saying no to people like who the person was in my DMs, I'm like, bro, I'm gonna fucking soar. Cause you do not impress me. Right. Your money doesn't impress me. Who you are doesn't impress me. Like, you know what would have impressed me? Had you taken me on a date and treated me the way every other guy has not treated me yet. Correct. There's a reason why I'm single. Right. I'm single because guys treat me like shit. If you would have just fucking courted me, took me out on a date, instead of just asking me to fucking spend the night at three, at, at 2 o'clock in the fucking morning, which is what every other fucking guy has done, like, what made you any different? But he was the one who was like, you're stereotyping me. Remember that? Right. It's like I'm stereotyping you based on your behavior. And I'm not just outwardly, I'm not just stereotyping you for nothing. It's based on your actions. That's why I'm stereotyping you. But was I wrong? And I wasn't wrong. That's the fucking funny part. I stereotype you, mother bitch, but I wasn't wrong. Right. I wasn't wrong. You hit me up at booty cheek hours. You want some fucking ass. I wasn't wrong. And when I told you, hey, take me out on a date, hit me up at a decent fucking hour. What does he do? I don't want this no more. I still got love for you, but I don't want this no more. This is your fault. This is your fault that we didn't link up. No, it's not. It's your fault. I told you what I wanted, but you ugh. You know what it is about these dudes? Rich people do not like when you have boundaries. No. Rich people do not like it when you have motherfucking boundaries, bro. Because rich people will pay for people to do shit for them. So yeah. they don't really understand no as a concept, they right? Because everyone's always like, it's, or anybody who's famous, because they always, like, you know how people always say, like, they're surrounded by yes men. Yeah. So they're not really, yeah, like, they're genuinely not accustomed to no after a certain point. Yeah. And, and that causes some issues. 
what's funny is I'm like this person that I'm talking about. Me, okay, so me, I love you, Lady Rose, but I'm putting you on blast, bitch. But this person, the person that I'm talking about that was treating me all kind of weird, my best friend is a huge fan of this person. Huge fan. And she was the one telling me, she was like, don't talk to him like that. Don't, no, you should go. But, you know, he is an important person. If he, he is an, if he is high value, he can't take you out. Not high value, high um, um, image, whatever the fuck. He's a high profile. high profile. He's a high profile man. So he can't just take you out on a regular date. Understood, bitch, but he could still take me out on a date. Right. And, no, but he, he's super busy. You don't know, you like, if he's busy all day, then, then, then you don't know, like, you don't know what it's like to date a guy like that because, you know, you've never dated a guy with that much money. And I'm like, Kind of true, kind of true. I'm like, but at the same time, I think rich men still get a day off. Right, <laughs> a day off, yeah, like, absolutely. Like maybe not, maybe not a whole day off, but you're gonna ser- you're gonna seriously tell me that you cannot meet up with me at one p.m. Yeah. No, you have one p.m. available. Like there's gonna even if I have to wait a month. My thing is, I will wait a whole month. But for you to talk to me and treat me and court me at a decent time, then yeah, I'll do it. But mind you. My best friend was the one who was like, she was making a bunch of excuses for him to me. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, bitch, let me ask you a question. Okay. If this was Daryl, my fucking, the, the fucking, my, my best friend, right? If this was a regular, degular fucking dude and he was treating me the exact same way that this fool's treating me, would you tell me to just like chill, sit back, take it? go and see him at two o'clock in the morning because he's busy? Would you say the same thing for a regular, degular guy versus this high profile, very rich man? No, of course not, of course not. No, because I'm like, just because this dude has money and because you're a fan means that I have to be treated a certain way? Like, and that's when I told her, I was like, low key, I was like, so if you were in my position, would you have went? And I'm like, oh, so you're one of those girls. Well, I think the thing you're touching on too is having integrity. Like, have you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's easy to lose sight of that when you're trying to go after something else. You know, yeah. I think that's probably like the time it's easiest to lose integrity when you're so focused on something else that you kind of lose lose the rest of yourself in the process. Yeah. So if your entire goal was to just hook up with somebody who's rich and famous, then yeah, you're gonna do anything to get there. But if you're trying to honor yourself first then you're going to, you know what I mean? Like you're going to yeah. choose that first. No, it's, it's funny because you remember that event that we went to, the Wild and Out event? Mm-hmm. So we went, we went to this Wild and Out recording and it was like, what was it? Like the bigs versus smalls and uh, tall versus skinny. It was like the baddies versus the wild. It was a yeah. very, I don't, I'm not really sure. It was yeah, something. it was, it was funny. It was cool. It's a, it's a cool concept, but they were filming Wild and Out, right? I have, um, shout out ODS Models. So ODS Models got me the the gig there, right? Mm -hmm. So mind you, there's not, ODS Models has a lot of pretty models in there. There's a bunch of pretty bitches just out and about, right? There's, There's pretty bitches, and of course they're using their bodies to try to get in the VIP section. VIP section has Nick Cannon's dad, some fucking weird rapper with all these tattoos on his face. I had no idea who he was, but everybody knew who the fuck this dude was. And I'm like, okay, whomst, I didn't. Whomst is that? Uh, right. No. And then he was talking shit about the people in the center the, the other day, right? He was talking shit about the people in the center. He was like, I don't hear y'all. And I was like, I don't know you. <laughs> no one knows who the fuck you are. Why are you up there? I know. Acting as if they were somebody, but like. People, like, mind you, my regular, degular ass friends that were part of the ODS models were trying their hardest to get into the VIP section. But some people's goals, like, some, that's some people's actual goals. Like, I just want to get in the VIP section. My bitch ass, I was like, fuck a VIP section. What the fuck this rapper going to do for me? Fuck me and leave me alone? What the fuck? Like, that's exactly what it's going to do to you. He puts you in VIP section, he gets free pussy. Bitch, I ain't talking to you. I was talking to every cameraman in that bitch. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, y'all, y'all hiring? Is Zeus hiring? Hey, hey, you, you, you in the fucking camera. Do you guys need help? Do you guys need somebody to be a fucking bitch and clean all this shit up? I'm Mexican. Like, I was literally networking, trying to get a fucking job there. Well, these girls are, I'm like, your, your whole life goal is to, like, get slept on by a fucking rapper. And I'm not talking about sleeping with the rapper. I'm talking about literally getting slept on. Like, you're, you are going, your, your life goal is to fucking get fucked by this rapper. He gonna forget who the fuck you are in two weeks. But you got fucked by a rapper. That's sad, bro. That is fucking embarrassing. I just... I know. No, it's never been for me either. I just, like, I'm I'm the person, like, I'm always so afraid to be perceived as somebody like that that I will just, like, avoid the VIP section altogether. Yes! You know, like, yes! I'll be, like, you know, I'm, like, I'll be, like, in the back room, like, just wherever. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't like that kind of... How odd is that that me... Okay, because I have the same feeling because that's how I felt. I'm, like... I feel like if you're a, if you're in the VIP section and you're just a girl who's pretty, you like you look stupid. Like yeah, yeah like like now it's I don't want to say you look like an escort. You don't, but it's like I know what you're there for. Everybody knows what you're there for. Yes, you look pretty, but everyone knows that you're in the VIP section, sitting next to all these celebrities because you're the pretty one and they want to have sex with you. I know. I don't want to be there. I mean, it's not even just women, though. It's men, too. Like, men, I mean, people, I, I see people do it to, like, Dana White all the time. Like, people will just, like, people just, like, follow him around. Like, have you ever seen, like, the shark and then, like, the, those little fish that swim underneath? <gasps> it's like, and I'm not talking about, like, his real friends. Like, of course, you know, like, you're always going to, like, yeah. if you and I are together. Um, but you can just tell there are people who are just, like, you know, like, they're, like, leeches. And I'm like, oh, dude, like, and you don't think that person knows, right? Like, you don't think that person's, like, okay. Why are you like my little like bottom like what are you doing right now? Like my bottom feeder. My little bottom <laughs> fish. I was like, yeah, why are you like my little like butt fish right now? Like what are you doing? Not the butt fish. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Because it's just and it also seems so disingenuous. Like if I'm that person, I'm not thinking like, oh, this person like really wants to be around me. I'm thinking this person wants something from me. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, because if I wasn't like Dana White, like the famous guy, would you be here? Like, do you actually enjoy my company or do you just enjoy my company because of what I could do for you? Mm. And there's a difference, a big difference, I think. That, ooh, that made a lot of sense. Okay, that made a lot of sense. I'm dropping like wisdom on this podcast today. Yes, bitch. Cause I'm like, cause I'm like, they, okay, so the other day people kind of, people kind of got offended. I'm sorry, people at Sticky Paws, but I had said something to George and I was like, oh, cause, boy. well, they were talking about Dana White. And I was like, why do y'all dick ride his dick so hard? Like, what? Who? I know who Dana White is. I get it. But, like, it's like one of those things where I'm like, like, bro, he's human. Why y'all, like, like, it's, it's just one, it's like one of those things where I feel like if Dana White said that he wanted a fan to eat shit, there's people out there that would eat shit for Dana White. You dick ride him that hard just to like either a just to get seen, just to get noticed, kind of deal. And don't get me wrong, it's not it's not just Dana White. Like every like like people do it to a lot of people. Like like oh, my brother worked with um, Britney Spears' dad. Oh God. Oh bro, most unpleasant person. My 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 brother's so nice. My brother's beyond fucking nice. And my brother was like, you know, working with Britney Spears' dad is like, he was just so unpleasant. However, because he throws money at people, kind of, in a sense, and because he's Britney Spears' dad, whatever he said was done. I want this, I want this, no one can touch Britney, no one can talk to Britney, I want this, I want that, I want that, and it gets done. And I'm like, who are you, though? Like, be fucking for real. Like. At the end of the day, you're still an abusive father. Father, and he. Oh, did you hear that he lost his leg? No. Britney Spears' dad lost his leg. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Go Jesus! Go Jesus! Go Jesus! Like God had it. God had Britney's back on that one, bro. This dude got his motherfucking leg amputated. Guess why? Cause he's human. Because he's a fucking person, bro. Guess what? You could be as rich as Britney Spears' fucking dad. You can have full control of the fucking queen of pop because Madonna died already. Queen of fucking pop. And still lose your leg to diabetes. And still basically. Lose I think that's what happened. Right? You, yeah. Does that affect? I don't know. 
Everything. That's what I'm saying. It's like that's it's karma. Like at the end of the day, it's like you're still fucking human. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much status you have. I don't see the point in dick riding somebody so hard if it's not gonna get you. I like I don't dick ride people. I'm just a genuine person. There's a different. There's a difference. I'm nice. You 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 can be nice to people and still want to do favors and they do favors for you, but like be genuine about your approach or not be genuine about your intentions with this person. I'm like, I like you just because I like you. I thought you're a cool person. Not because you have money, not because you can get me into the to the fucking Britney Spears show or like the UFC or like just cause you like I'm literally just genuinely wanting to get to know you. Not because you can get me close to Britney Spears. Like I that that's the shit. Like I it it weirds me out that people can still be impressed by people because you are one. Weird as fuck. What's your take on that? <laughs> I know. I feel like I'm like I'm like taking it all in. Um no, I mean I I totally agree with you and I think that uh, again like I don't people like uh, are going to just have to take my word for this, but I've always been like that. Like if you're famous but we don't vibe, like then that's like it's that's it for me. You know, like I don't really care that you're famous. If we're if I wouldn't be friends with you if you were like a nobody, then I'm not gonna be friends with you just because you're famous. Um, and then the reverse is true as well. Like yeah. if you're famous, but I'm just like you're a cool person, like then I ride for you. That's it. Have you like you know famous people? Yeah. You, you have you dated famous people? Um, I've dabbled. I've <laughs> dabbled a little bit here and there. <laughs> You know, I've, yeah. Oh, I've dated. I, okay, so I dated three celebrities that are like a known, right? Ish, and it's one of those things too, where I'm like, okay, one of them still cheated on me. He's still a dog. the 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 other one, the other one cheated on me with a trans girl. He's a dog. I'm like, these are still people, right? Like I dated a celebrity, and it was it wasn't all that was cracked up to be. Like, oh yeah, like oh you're dating a celebrity. No one even knows who the fuck I dated. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell fucking anybody. They told people. I didn't tell people shit because I was kind of embarrassed a little bit. I'm like, oh, one of them's kind of gay. I'm like, if people found out that oh. I dated this dude, well, I said it on I said it on one of my podcasts. I was like, I used to date this dude, bro. It's kind of embarrassing. You told the name. You said the name. Yeah, well, I called him a nickname that I call him. Oh. I call him Wick. Do you know Wick? Yeah. Yeah. The little short one with the fat lips. Oh. Yeah, right up your alley. No, I'm gay as fuck. I love me a gay man. I feel like most of the guys I've dated have been gay. It's so funny. You know what's so funny? Oh, my God. So when I was dating my best friend, right? Like, fuck him, right? But I was dating I was dating my best friend, and when I told Chance about it, Chance was like, uh, he was like, wait, you and Daryl? And I was like, yeah, me and Daryl like, are, like, talking. And he was like, I knew that homie was gay. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, I I swear, I'm like, if you if if I liked you as a man, there has to there had to have been some type of like femininity to you. Like I like feminine, I like girls for a reason. You look like a little gender bender. What is gender bender exactly? I just made it up right now. Oh, I like this. I know. I'm like, I'm on a roll today. This yeah. is like <laughs> amazing. I really. <laughs> no, I think I think like when it comes to, like I would I don't want to say I'll date anything. It's all about like the vibe. But like I'm not, like I'm not, I'm not anti. I used to think I was anti-trans. Then I was like, I don't think I could date a trans. I would fuck one though. I'll fuck, I'll fuck a trans girl, trans guy, whatever the fuck. But I don't, I don't think I could date one just because the identity issues are kind of like I can't. I don't think I could deal with that. No offense to no one and none of them, but I just, it's like the like constantly calling you he, and I know you look like a girl. I'm like ah. It's and you get mad at it, oh, bitch, we gonna fight. Oh, we're gonna fight. Cause I'm gonna be like, bitch, you got titties. You got motherfucking titties and you still wear a plastic dick, but you want me to call you he? I right, bitch, fuck you. Like, I would be so disrespectful if she can't, like, if she didn't take out the trash, I would get so disrespectful. Oh my God. And like, no. You're like, commit to the bit or don't. Yes. Yeah, you know? Like, yes. yeah, I yeah. get it, yeah. No, fuck that. I would, oh, they get on my nerves. They do, they get on my nerves. It was this one girl. This one girl, she kind of fucked it up for all the trans people because I was gonna try it. Like I was, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at it, but then 
it was the it was the simple fact that like like some of these people really get like irate with you calling them by their birth name like it's some excuse oh, me oh yeah they call it i think dead naming the dead name yeah i'm like like if i met you as kimberly and i've been calling you kimberly for fucking 2 years now and then all of a sudden you change your name to cameron Bitch, a Kimberly might slip up, but if Kimberly slips up and it slips up genuinely and you get mad at me because you think that I'm genuinely just trying to piss you off, that's what I can't do. That's why y'all single. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I if it's like if you if it's an honest mistake, I feel like they have to like let you slide because she it didn't. Happen. That one girl didn't. It was just that one girl. Mm. I've never dated a trans person, but I date like ultra Republican men and I'm always trying to turn them out. So it's kind of the same thing. Why are you Democrat? Uh, yeah, I would consider myself left leaning. Yeah. But I always, yeah, but I feel like there's like a very strange like uh, magnetic attraction between like me and like the ultra hard right guys. And so uh -huh. I just, you know, I don't know. Okay. I'm leaning into it nowadays. I'm just like, all right, well. I feel like. I don't know, like, 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 I'm not a Republican, and I do not like Trump, but we need the homie back. We need him back. Oh God, I wouldn't go that far, but I would say, do, bro, we do Trump. We need to. Mother. I feel like we need to be single. It's like it's that. We need to be single for a while as a country. Like I feel like we need to just be. Why do I love that reply, that's bro? Like, it's not, wait, by the way, that's not. You've never seen that on the internet. We need to just be single for a while as a country. Yeah, no, not as a country. I've never even seen that. Oh no, that's, that's like a hilarious. Thing. And I'm like, bro, like, let's just take a couple years off to self reflect. Like, let's have like an eat. Like, like as a country, let's have like an eat, pray, love experience. Like, let's just Ugh. be. Let's just like take a pause. Yeah, you know, a healthy pause, and just you know, because we haven't been picking very well. You know, there's this. There's this one like. Oh, for he's an independent um, candidate, though. I I don't know his name. He looks like he's Indian. I, I'm sorry if that sounded so racist, but he he seems like he's like some type of like Indian or something. But he is like like I want him to win, but he's like a nothing. He's not Republican. He's not Democrat. I need to find because Chance is the one who told me about him. I don't follow politics anymore because it pisses me off. I used to I used to follow politics when Obama was running. That pissed me off. Oh, that made me mad. Like that shit makes me mad. When you understand politics and 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 you hear them speaking, that shit it just genuinely pissed me off. Like made me an angry person. So I just stopped, I just stopped politics. But but do I think we need Trump back? I do. Oh no, really? No. Well, who else is gonna fix the money situation? What the fuck, bro? We got um, like broke rich in the fucking office right now. No, I like I I just it's I I'm I don't want any more people with problems. You know what I mean? Like I don't want people who are like uh, senile, Joe. Um, <laughs> I don't want people <laughs> who are like like insane like Trump like and by the way I'm not like knocking him for being insane like I'm also unstable like I don't I also should not be <laughs> running the country you know what I mean like I, but I'm like at least I know that like I can admit that to myself like I feel like Trump like you gotta be like listen pal like no at the end of the day no Gemini should have like the launch codes it's just a no go is he for a me. Gemini yeah that makes so much fucking sense yeah I know. By the way, like the, the red pill guys are gonna have a fucking field day with this one. I knew I knew as soon as I brought up Gemini that I was like I was uh, signing Bro. my own death warrant there. But if I just you, if you are a red pill, you're automatically a cancer. You're just sensitive. You're oh. sensitive and you're mad that bitches don't wanna fuck you. And now that you have money to pay them to fuck you, all of a sudden you feel like entitled to tell them that they should fuck you. That's kinda sad. It's sad to like live that red pill life. Not gonna lie. I'm like I've I've I think I have followed enough red pill stuff to understand that I'm like, bro, you were you were just not cool in school. You didn't get bitches. You were the nerd, obviously. You were nerdy enough to get successful in your adult life. And now you gotta pay bitches to like do right by you. I find that so sad and so weird. But that's like the whole red pill movement, it's like red pill is not what red pill is supposed to be. And I've and I've learned this. Like red pill is supposed to be what like Travis is, what George is. Like, like George George has a fucking girl who like literally sits here and like does his fucking she she engineers his podcast for him. Yeah, she's a ride or die. My point. But like 
George never once demanded it. George doesn't demand her to fucking be right by her. Like, she's just like, I just want to do right by you. Like, you're so fine. You're like, oh, George, you're so sexy because you just, you just fucking take control, mother. You are so nice to me. Like, you treat me with respect. You, you provide, bitch. Like, it just, it makes you want to give him the pussy. Like, I can understand where Cameron's coming from. Like, you know what, bitch? Like, you're so nice to me. I want to help you with your career. And I want to fuck you really good at You're like, while I'm at it. That's what Red Pill is. Be a good man and the bitch will do right by you. But yeah. these Red Pill dudes are like, I have money. I have status. I could pay you to fucking be nice to me. So I'm going to demand it. You're a bitch, bro. That's bitch move. Yeah. Sorry, Rolo. Rolo. I haven't, I haven't really had a conversation with him yet. I was on Dabrick's podcast. And I've not spoken to Rolo yet. Um, and then, like, uh, Michael Sartain and I, I'm like, I've passed him. It's like a school. Like, I've passed him in the hallway a bunch. <laughs> and then he just invited me to, like, come to his toy drive, which I'm going to do because it's a, I think it, I, I like when people. I want to go with you. I really want to yeah, go. Yeah, no, I like when people raise money. Um, it definitely bumps him up a couple notches in my book when people do charity work. Yeah, he's so um, sweet. But we have yet to have, like, a direct like you know, like we're like it's like we're circling each other. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's coming to a head. But I would, I would definitely do a podcast with him. I just don't want to do the panel. No, not, not the, panel. the panel. Access, yeah. access, vague. Don't get me wrong. If you're like into the red pill stuff and you're into like embarrassing women and bashing women, access Vegas is like the place to. Or even just to learn about men, learning about statistics, because that's all they fucking do. That all they do is label statistics. If you want to learn about statistics and like men and women and all that stuff, Access Vegas is the perfect place to go. And I'm not knocking it because I was on it. <laughs> but Michael Sartain's podcast completely different from Access Vegas. Yeah. Like he he's genuine on his podcast and he like genuinely wants to know about you and he's like funny. Like I like Michael. I like Rolo too. It's just that that podcast, their content. Ugh. I just I, I genuinely feel like they're teaching people how to hate women. Yeah, I think that's like the always like I always say like the it starts out like some of their ideas start out like good. like I'm like oh I get that I like you know like the things they're teaching but it, I feel like it all roads end up leading to but women are the problem and I that I have a hard time with yeah you know like it's not like inherently all the ideas are bad because they're not it's just that like it it seems like it always ends up back there and I feel like they always accuse other people of being shallow when they themselves are promoting. Shallow, shallow principles yeah and i'm like well you know like i didn't say that right like i didn't say that a man's only value is what he can provide to me financially and if he could take care of me like i think you're as a man your value go way beyond that yeah just like my value goes beyond um like my youth or, or beauty you know but I, that's and it's like like there's so much more to that right i'm like there's so much more and i'm like and that's the thing about red pill too is i'm like people people will make it seem like red pill is really teaching something like and uh, like they make it seem like they're really teaching something educational just because the statistics are there right and it's not true i'm like bro the statistics ain't gonna fucking tell you shit what are the statistics gonna tell you that women are the fucking problem well statistically i'm like the reason i'm like statistically women are the ones that leave the marriage who's the problem i also sometimes wonder <laughs> where they're getting their statistics from because i could just start like Tinder, saying Tinder, bro that's guys. They're getting their information off of Tinder. Rich, get the fuck that out. In and of itself, is a huge uh, red flag to me. We, with this, Tinder, people, you can't even rely on people to like put their proper height in Tinder, and now that's like suddenly like this a wealth of information. Which is, which is something that Jamie Lynn, Jamie Lynn, remember the girl you met from Pink, Pink Pill podcast? Yeah. So Jamie Lynn literally said, um, she was like, the statistics are one thing. She was like, yes, men will report that they want a girl that, you know, looks like me, looks like Brie, looks like Carolina, right? They want a girl that looks like us, but what do they get? They get a girl that fucking looks like Rosie O'Donnell. That's what they are settling for. Reason being because they cannot get what you guys are saying that men want. Exactly. So I'm like, someone's here. So I'm like that that bullshit that bullshit alone is like like the statistics are one thing but what actually comes to play when it comes to red pill stuff is completely not anything that they say it's nothing that they say like I feel like everything that's red pill is so I'm like it's just not true 
And you know what the hard part is? I feel like you just said this, but like when you talk to them one on one, or you just talk to them out like in individually, like out in the in the regular world. Like I like these guys. Like they're cool. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there, there's a lot of things like about them that I find to be very likable. Um, and so then, but then when they kind of get on this like diatribe, I'm like, oh, what are you? Why? <laughs> you know, it's like a yeah, like what's it like Darth Vader? Like come back from the dark side. Like you know, like reel them in. Like what are you doing? You don't need to do that, right? Like you have so much more to offer. Like why are you? Why go this route of all the routes? Of all so the many routes, other routes. You choose red pill, bitch. Bye. Like, oh god. Either way, okay. To close off, to close off the the podcast, I just have one random stupid ass question. Oh, okay, go. If God, if God were to meet you, what do you think his impression of you would be? You already know my answer to this. I feel like he would say this is one of my finest, <laughs> finest creations down here, <laughs> doing a great job, doing the best she can in this insane world that I have I have cre- put her in, but. Consider considering God sees everything that you do behind closed doors. Um, do you think he'd still think that? Yeah, no, I do. Yeah? Yeah. I think God would think I'm a piece of shit. No. Cause it if also like if you really wanna if you really wanna be serious about it, like they always say, like if, if you believe in God, he created you in his image. So if we're all God acting at like living different, you know, like living different ways. I never like, thought of it that way. You know? So that's a really good way to put it. Cause I'm gonna be like, "Hey, Lord, this your fault." Plus, I think if if there is a higher power, like they more than anything else would know um, who you really are. They would know what's in your heart and in your soul. True. And I think that there's no such a thing as a perfect person. Um, so I think that if in if in your heart and soul, like you you know you are good, right? You're inherently good, and you try your best. Doesn't mean you're perfect. It's like if you're if you're trying your best to be perfect. That's all you need. Yeah. Not everyone's perfect. We make mistakes, but it's like, like, I feel like if I if I'm just trying my best to live what I believe is perfect, then I'm doing all right. And not even perfect. It's just being a good person. But I like that answer. Good answer. Good answer. She put a lot of wisdom in this bitch. I know. She what you a see, bitch. You got big titties, a big (laughs) booty, and she got big fat lips, and 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 she's smart as fuck, bro. You got a fat ass brain too. All the wisdom. That's like keep all the wisdom in there. Her brain is over here full of bacon, and that's just me. I'm hungry. I'm like, no, you got a fat brain, bitch. I like it. Mm. She's so attractive. Well, thank you for having me on again. This is impromptu. Follow my bitch. Follow my Bree Bree Hunter. What are you, Bree Bree Hunter, at, on Instagram? And what else? What do you? Where can the people find you? Um, everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, OnlyFans, and I'm at Bree Bree Hunter on pretty much everything. So type her whole name out. We oh, tend to get shadow banned a lot. Band. So if you don't, if it doesn't just pop up, type out the whole name spelled like it sounds: Bree Bree Hunter with an I. All right, guys. But until next time, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye.